U.S. November housing starts are projected to rebound from a disappointing October that saw housing starts shrink by 11 percent. Starts hit their lowest number since May and were well below market expectations. But given that it's Fed Day, the bigger question really is how is the U.S. housing market going to fare in the face of a liftoff in rates? Joining us live from Miami is Jeff Taylor, co-founder and managing partner at Digital Risk. Jeff, thank you so much for getting up early for us. I guess there's probably no other sector that's benefited as much as the housing sector from the low interest rate environment. Currently, 30-year mortgage rates are at around 4%. In the face of tightening, are they going to be rising to above 6% again, 5%? You know, I don't think we see. Uh, I think we'll see five percent in 2016. And it, you know, it's interesting as we see the rate probably rise about 0.25 percent. What we're really going to see in 2016 is, I think, the strengthening of the purchase market. Now, that might sound a little counterintuitive, but I think what you're going to see after a first rate increase is people who have been sitting on the sidelines saying, "Hey, do I really want to buy a house?" They're probably going to be called to action, go into the market, look for that first-time home purchase. People who have been thinking about listing their house are going to go ahead and list our house. So I think we're actually going to see a spike here in the next, maybe an early spring type housing market in the next four months. And then I think in the second rate increase hike, which will come probably sometime in spring, you'll probably see some of the markets start to stabilize as far as housing goes. And you're going to see much more focus on a purchase market and that refinance market really start to tail off since we haven't had a hike in over 10 years. Well, and then we are going into the election season next year. Do we actually know what the Republicans yeah. versus the Democrats have planned in terms of housing? I know that both were part of, partly blamed for the demise of uh, the government funded agencies. So uh, do we know what the policies actually look like? You know, I, that, that's a huge question. I don't think anybody has uh, a clear answer exactly what they're going to do with Freddie and Fannie going forward. But what I will tell you is the books that are being originated that Freddie and Fannie are guaranteeing right now are the cleanest in histor history. The delinquency rates are the lowest in history. So in many aspects, if it's not broken, it's kind of really hard to fix. Um, so I think that there's not a clear plan out there right now, but that will certainly be a main topic of discussion as you head into the next election uh, four-year cycle. And Jeff, post the subprime crisis, presumably there's still a reluctance from politicians to really push new home ownership like the days we used to see. But also you're facing a bit of a demographic challenge when it comes to new home buyers. And the trend we're seeing with millennials being more reluctant to get out of the big city and move to the suburb. Does that suggest there are some deals to be found when you get outside of the main urban areas? You know, I think there is, and I think also as you see these rates increase, I think you're going to see a lot of the banks try to realize, okay, we just lost that huge refinance stream and stepped down. How can we get more creative with some prudent lending that's going to target specifically to those millennials and how they can afford that house in the suburbs? Because the affordability factor in the cities where the big jobs are right now may still be a little bit tight, but I think the millennials will look to the suburbs for the most affordable housing. I think you'll see a lot of the big banks coming up with mortgage products that are that suit their needs going forward, especially in later in the second half of 2016. And does that trend then really create some additional headwinds for the home builders themselves, considering that a lot of the home building activity takes place out of the main urban centers as well? You know what, I think the home builders really have got it pegged down. They have been buying real estate for the last few years that really are filtering towards that move up, high, move up home buyer, maybe not so much the millennials. So I think the home builders are in good shape, but again, it's location, location, location. Are they buying in the cities where people feel very confident about their jobs, where the jobs are growing like a San Francisco and in New York? And then if they're going into the suburbs, they have to make sure that they're having that uh, demand, they have the demand judged correctly out there. So I'm pretty neutral to positive on the home builders for 2016. All right, and a reminder, we'll get the latest U.S. housing start data just a bit later. Jeff Taylor, thank you for joining us. That's Jeff Taylor, co-founder and managing partner at Digital Risk.